Michael is not from Spain. La Viva España. Mine's got the wrong graphic up because um, you don't look a lot like a bald um, Scotsman. <laughs> no. Is this what going to Tenerife does to you, Matt? Exactly. And hello, my friends. And you are my friends. Martin is out today, so he's producing behind the behind the scenes. He's Hence, in the zoo. <laughs> so the monkeys have got the keys to the show. <laughs> Happy birthday to uh, Martin's mum. That is why he's at the zoo. And while I'm on happy birthdays, I should have given a happy birthday yesterday, Matt, to um, Lee Bayliss's son, Connor, who oh, is man. 10. And he had a video message from Kyle Edwards. No way. And he had a signed card from wow. the town first team squad. So happy That's birthday, really? Connor. Um, unfortunately, you... town couldn't get a victory yesterday and neither could Oldham because they lost. To Port Vale. Did you, did you used to get your birthday card from a player signed as a junior blues? Yeah, player? junior blues when I was um, younger, back in the day. You know, Who you had your, your birthday card. Who did you get? Who was um, your player? Probably Frank Yallop. Oh, nice. I, John Walk was mine. I kind of miss getting that every year now. I always remember, Matt, when I won a... Um, you know the big posters they used to do, the team photos? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was the 84-85. To, it was the Radio Orwell kit. Oh, right, yeah. One, it was... Well, it was signed, but it was not the proper signatures, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. At the bottom. I won it in a junior blues competition. I probably might even have been in the, one of the programmes, maybe. I can't remember. <laughs> well, we've got, we're going to kick off the show before we get to Shrewsbury, the rubbish bit. We've got really good bits to start with, haven't we? Do you want to in introduce them, Rich? Yeah, so if um, town fans were aware last week... Um, it was um, the Cambridge game. They um, put out a little video. Uh, Mark Ashton, uh, he had a letter from an eight-year-old uh, little boy, town fan, called Noah, about his teacher, Mrs Granger, who, unfortunately, is a Cambridge fan, and she must have had a fantastic time last Saturday. <laughs> Matt, well she was yeah. in the director's box, and they rolled us over 1-0. But, yeah, really <laughs> um, a brilliant four-page letter. Obviously, Verity's not very well. She's going to tell us about that. And, um, yeah, so bring in Martin, Noah, and Mrs. Granger. Hey, How you doing? Hello. Welcome to Talking Town. How are we? Good, thank oh, you. Man. You're not nervous, Noah? You've got a lot of people watching. Your school friends might be watching as well. <laughs> I'm not nervous. <laughs> right, well, so tell, tell us all about it. your letter that you wrote to Mark Ashton. Four pages long. Wow. Yeah. yeah. What prompted you to write it as well? You were sitting there one day and what went through your mind? What, what did you want to say? Well, Miss Granger obviously is my teacher and she's got a lot of effort in year three to teach me. So I thought oh, I'm going to help her so she can get better and have a nice life and um, look with a young kid called Noah as well. So, Okay. Brilliant, great stuff. So I'm going to call you Mrs. Granger because it, okay, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't feel right to call you by your first name. <laughs> <laughs> so Mrs. Granger, tell us what 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 is the um because I know your family have been affected by this as well, but what is what is the condition you've got? It's a very rare condition, isn't it? Yeah, so I have a condition called Mingi, M-N-G-I-E, which is like a really rare genetic condition where basically my body doesn't deal with um it's lacking an enzyme in it that doesn't deal with stuff that other people's bodies deal with so it's basically gradually degenerating and slowly destroying itself so it's a little bit rubbish um and sadly we last year we lost my sister to it so we do know kind of where it's going if you know what i mean so um wow and it's yeah and we were reading it's ultra it's ultra rare to like 400 people in the world, record, less than two hundred people ever recorded on record wow. to have it. So yes, yeah, ultra ultra rare. Um, it mainly it sort of really affects your digestion and your guts, and then but then it starts to spread to other areas. So yeah. Okay. Who helped you, you, know, yeah, you know, know. write that? Did you write that letter yourself, or did your dad help you know? Because I I looked when I see Mark Ashton and the handwriting was absolutely perfect. Was I wrote it myself. Wow. I did it. I My handwriting is terrible. It's probably worse. It's, it's, it's worse than yours, Rich, and that's saying something. Isn't it? My handwriting's quite good. It is. Surprising. <laughs> <laughs> take us back to last Saturday when you were in the director's box. and you Who did you meet then? I'd say you, you met uh, Kieran McKenna and you met Mark Bonner. Who else wow. did you meet? Mark Ashton as well. What's he like? Was he friendly? Yeah, he's really friendly. Yeah. Of course he is. <laughs> <laughs> He wasn't a big scary executive in a suit. <laughs> no. No. Oh, that's good. And you had lunch there? You had lunch before the game? Yep. What it was really have? nice. 
What um, you Pine chips? Nuggets. Nuggets with oh, chips. Nice. Watercress. So. Oh, what was it like, though, with, sitting with your teacher when Cambridge scored? Did, did she celebrate? Did Mrs. Granger celebrate when... He was out there, <laughs> punch in the air. I think she did. I think she did. <laughs> I was trying my best to, you know, be dignified, but it, it wasn't easy. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I, was, I was really disappointed. That, I, was, well, we all were. I was watching the game from Tenerife. I was disappointed. I was trying to start... I was, been at I was at the game, and I thought Cambridge, Mrs. Granger, played very well, and I thought they... Yeah. Thoroughly deserve their victory. Yeah, I mean, Cambridge, we're, we're pretty good. We're pretty good, really. And, you know, it's been a great a great first season back in, in, in League One. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They might look to push on next season. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> when, when, when this show goes, um, I'll obviously share it on YouTube. Um, I'll call you Verity. I'll, I'll <laughs> share the link. If anyone's watching in the chat who wants to donate, just head to my Twitter page. Um, I'll share it on Facebook as well. Um, you, I think you've been everywhere, haven't you? Uh, very, you've been on Look East. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. Lots of people have shown, yeah, really, a really, really kind and a, like a great interest in it. And that's all thanks to Noah kickstarting this with his with his letter, which is. Yeah. You get ripped by your mates now. I don't want no favouritism when you're at school. Because <laughs> if that was back in the day, you'd it, you, they'd say he's a teacher's pet, wouldn't they, mate? <laughs> Teacher, you used to get that, didn't you? At school, yeah. I can remember. <laughs> Who's... Mrs. Granger, w w is she your favourite teacher? Um, <laughs> Think about this teacher. She's a good teacher. She's a good teacher. Oh, yeah, good teacher. Fantastic. Well done. <laughs> no, are you the only Ipswich fan in your school, then? I think I am, yes. Who's your favourite player, then? I don't know. They're all my favourite. All your favourite. Okay. And you like but, McKenna? But I like. But I like uh, Luco, Wes Burns and Morsi and the goalkeeper, oh, obviously. Look, yeah. They're all my favourite and he's really going to rule off. And what about McKenna? <laughs> you like McKenna better than Paul Cook? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> how, did you, how did you feel, Verity, when you heard that Noah had wrote that letter? Oh, it, it was really overwhelming, actually, because you know I'm quite, I'm quite a private person. Like, before all of this, I... I didn't really tell many of my friends or, you know, I don't think any of the parents at school would have even known I had this condition or anything yeah. like that. But then obviously when our um, options became so limited as to what we could do and we had to, we realised the, the, the great cost of um, this potentially life-saving treatment, we had to sort of put our message out there. And then, you know, that's opening yourself up, you know, being brave and bold in front of like the people yeah. you work with you the, the, the parents you see all the time and the pupils yeah, yeah, so course, yeah. the fact that then he Noah spent that time to just you know and I don't know how long it would have taken him to write but I can imagine it was like a long slog Noah to, to get four pages out written that beautifully and, and that detail okay. so it was completely overwhelming and his mum sent us an, a message saying that he'd done this so it was completely out of the blue I had no idea he was doing it um but yeah no right. it's like Totally moving. Learn, so obviously, you've, you've obviously still been working through COVID as well. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. unfortunately, I think we both had COVID, haven't we, from school, Noah? Yeah, we I had COVID. Know, we both managed to catch it during the time. So, yeah. But if anyone wants to donate, listen in the chat. I think you've raised, I looked this morning, it's 55,000 and you're looking to raise half a million. So, wow. so look, I know times are tough for everyone at the minute. Yeah, we've got some offline donations as well. Okay. So I think here in sort of 95,000. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. Off Almost the fifth out. Fantastic. Yeah. So, but yeah, there's there's a link if anyone is interested in Yeah, 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 absolutely. We'll we'll share page. It's, it's a great that. way. Absolutely. We'll, we'll be doing that. Well, we had, we'll, had uh, Cambridge had a good win yesterday. Yeah. yeah definitely. No, Ipswich didn't. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> no, are we, no, we're going are we going to win the title next season? Are we going to pick Cambridge to the title next season, do you think? Yeah, <laughs> I, I've got I've got a good reason why we're going to get promoted next. Oh, season. go on then, go on then, tell me. Well, because because we had Kim McKenna, we brought him in at Christmas, I think. We did. He had yeah. a little bit of matter of time until the end of the season. So when we yeah. get him a full season, if we get him a good run, then we'll probably get promoted. Like so. it, very good. In the comments Matt. there, in the comments there, Matt Leighton Durant says, "Can Noah take over from the Gov?" Well, <laughs> I think that's a very, actually a very good idea. <laughs> you're, podcast, you're an natural. Yep, I've got a season ticket for next season. Have you? Good Brilliant. Yeah. Well done. We've got our season tickets as well. 
So we'll see you, you around. Get too many Cambridge games, Verity. Um, so I was a season ticket holder from about two to till I had my little boy. Um, wow. and I, I, I haven't been for the last two seasons just because of COVID and shielding and yeah, of course, and yeah. that. But, um, yeah, I, I get to I get to a few. Brilliant. So yeah. <laughs> Great stuff. Well, we're going to be playing each other again next season, so perhaps we'll chat then. Yeah, it'd be lovely. <laughs> Come back and see us. Look, we'll, yeah. we'll, anyway, let on, we'll let you get on with your phone. It's, um, it's been really good, and I'll share, I'll share this on my Facebook and my Twitter, much, and Matt yeah. will do the same. And yeah. tell, all your friends, tell all your friends about us, Noah. Make sure I just want I just want to say something. I'm just going to say thank you very much to the fans for our support. It's really yeah. nice to be it's with really us. It's incredible. Yeah. Such really fans. Fantastic. <laughs> Great stuff. Okay, guys, we will uh, we'll catch up with you soon. And good luck with the fundraising. Like we said, we'll Thank share you. it, and everyone in the comments will get involved. We have a lot of these kind of initiatives. So, cheers, Noah. Noah. All the best, Noah. Good day, mate. There we go. Isn't that great? That was brilliant. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. That's that's something that Talking Town always does. You know, if there's something yes, out there that we can help people with and we can raise money with, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, look, we're here to help. And let's hope that some people watch this show and. They can dig, dig deep, Matt, and just just help yeah. with a, a few quid here and there because yeah. it, it, it all helps, doesn't it? Absolutely. He was uh, he was a smart young man. Obviously, well taught yeah. by Mister Granger, wasn't he, Noah? Yeah. Very impressive. Well, let's not delay the inevitable. I guess <laughs> we, should, we should go and start. Look, I'm wearing. Look, listen. Before we do start, I'm wearing my replica shirt today because all my clothes are in the wash because we only got back last night. But interestingly, Rich, there was a lot of football league shirts around the pool while I was. Who did you see? Made a little list because you know you'll remember that you know, the European Super League was this all all you know all powerful mechanism, wasn't it? And it's gonna that's gonna drive forward. Yet the shirts I saw get that some of these Barnsley, Luton, Sheffield United, Northampton, Hull, Preston, Celtic, Rangers, Aberdeen, hashtag United, Queen of the South, and Ipswich. I said to Lizzie, those Ipswich fans will be over in a minute for a selfie in that break. Oh, there was more than one Ipswich fan. Yeah, you I, said, be only one. I said, give it, give it a minute. They'll be I over. They don't know who you were. Never, never saw them again. <laughs> if that was Colin, if that was Colin, he would be after them. He'd, he'd be on, um, <laughs> and he'd be subscribed. Colin's not here today because Colin's out for dinner. Yeah. Happy birthday, Venetia. Yes, happy birthday, Venetia. Absolutely. Well, where do we start? Well, let, let me start. Sure. Is Martin dropping a live link in? I'm not sure if there's no. a live link in the chat today. I'm not sure he is. Martin is in the, the background. If a live yeah. link appears and someone does want to come on, jump on it. If not, we'll just waffle yeah, away. Yeah, we'll we'll just waffle on, yeah. yeah. We'll just comment. We'll, we'll read really out. Well, I'm going, start, I'm going to start at the gate, Rich. Because as you yeah. know, I was flying while the game was on. Right? I was trying not to text you. I thought, I don't want I know, to spoil the score. Yeah. I, it's... It's horrible when you're trying to avoid something and someone texts you and then you think. So I didn't text you at all. If I was texting yeah, Martin, it was off the group. It was fantastic. Well organised. I appreciate it. So me and Richard Beans, I said, when do, think, when do you think the game will go all 90 minutes? We'll be back on the iPhone. It goes, I'll put it in the evening. So I get to seven o'clock, got in at six, got seven, nothing, eight, nine, ten. I thought, I'm not going to bed until this is this is live. At 11, 12, 1 a.m., <laughs> they unload the game right before night ends. Well, I thought I'm not watching it now. I watch it in the morning. So one a.m. Why? Why one a.m.? It's a third tier game, not Premier League, is it? You know, <laughs> not be holding to global TV right? So I clicked on it this morning, and as the video opens, you get a drop down. Shrewsbury one, Ipswich one. <laughs> yay, yay! You and could have I'm... saved yourself all that pain by watching the mini little <laughs> proof. <laughs> the yeah. you and then below the video, so the video is sandwiched between these two windows. And then below it, it's got highlights from the game, you know, like in text. And it goes, full-time whistle, 1-1. One, one. Now, that annoyed me. I've got to say, I thought, like, that annoyed me. With my MLB pass with the Cubs, you can turn spoilers off. So, off. You, you, yeah, you can just you can just watch well, it. Well, hopefully in, in a couple of years when we've got town TV, yeah, that'll be a thing of the past. Look, Matt Stannard, planes have Wi-Fi these days. Not on, not on Jet 2, apparently. That was another one of my thoughts. I was thinking I could watch it. I was flying, but anyway, Stephen Digby, was in Tenerife. Stephen Digby was in Tenerife. Where were you, Stephen? Let me know. Didn't come and say hello to you. Were, were you at the uh, were you in uh, Golf de Sur? <laughs> That's right, very windy there, apparently. You told me. Oh, God. No, no, I, I was fuming at the start of the week. It kept going from sunny to like really chilly and windy, and then last you were two, lucky. three days. You'd have been in, in, in Costa del Chelmsford on um, Thursday because yeah, I was obviously yeah, laid yeah. up at home with COVID. I was watching the, yeah. the first day of the county season from Chelmsford, Essex <laughs> yeah. cricket. Top stuff, 
stream right. live all the games on the YouTube <laughs> channel. It was so windy down there. It was. Oh, my Lord. Anyway, <laughs> you watched the game. What did you make of it, Matt? <laughs> So, um, what did I make of it? I thought it was a very similar game to Oxford, in actual fact. Um, and interestingly, they the both the, the equalizing goals we were chatting about this earlier on the phone, weren't we? The equalizing, goal, equalizing goals we got in the Oxford and the Shrewsbury games are goals that we never score. A set piece from a corner, yeah. from the Oxford having dominated the game, we've dominated again yesterday. Lo and behold, Wally comes on, doesn't he? The old timer. Scored on Portman on. Road as well, didn't he? Yeah. It's got a good goal down at Portman Road. It was a good goal, yeah. And it, it's this 30-yarder, and we've and we lost it. And you could see the frustration in McKenna's interview after, couldn't you? That, you know, we've had all this possession, all this, you know, attacking play. Yeah, it seems to, it just seems to fizz out at the end, in, in, yeah. you know, in the final third, doesn't it? And he said, we've got to be more ruthless. But I think to myself, how are we going to be more ruthless? I was just looking this, this morning. I was looking this morning. I was going through the team's... How many goals they've all scored? So top nine down to town. So we've scored 60. 60 yeah. scored, 42 conceded. Wigan, 73. MK, 69. Yeah. Rotherham, 64. They've only conceded 26, though. They're, they're the Tight. stingiest defence in the league. So we won't be scoring a goal next Saturday. Don't think we're going there and scoring anybody. <laughs> yeah. 67. Sheffield Wednesday, 67. Sunderland, 69. Wickham, 69. Oxford, top scorers in the league, 76. But they've conceded 54. Yeah. And then Town, 60. So, we obviously, we're behind all them teams, aren't we? Yeah, 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 absolutely. But it's we don't bit, create yeah. enough, Matt. When If you look at yesterday, 63% yeah. possession, eight shots, only four on target. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, yeah, the, the, the amount of shots and what we're having on target isn't, doesn't equate to the... The possession, but as as the guys that sit around me who are on my little WhatsApp as well, David and Co at, at, at Pullman Road, they said, "Oh, we were listening to the game on um, the radio and listening to Brenner, and he said that the 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 recycling of all the names it goes to Wolfenden, then it goes to Burns, and it goes to Penny, and it's back over." He said, "There's so many names, you never end up doing anything with the ball in the final third, and this is really the big thing. I, you know, this is my worry about next season. You know, I do feel like we can be champions next season. I I, I, uh, I share what Noah's saying." But is it going to be with the same personnel? Because the definition of madness is doing the same thing over and over and trying to get, the, you know, expecting a different result. So there's going to have to be some kind of shift in the summer, be it, I don't know, a formation, a style of play or attacking threat. Most likely going to be attacking threat, isn't it? But as, as everyone's saying in the comments there, you know, if Norwood's on his own, he's going to be kind of reliant on the, you know, the... the the two either it's side and the two in midfield. 570 yeah. passes yeah. compared to 336 from Shrewsbury. We, yeah. we can pass teams to death, Matt. Yes. But we, move the ball. we move the ball. <laughs> McKenna said it. Sam Morty said it. We move the ball too slow. Yes. Yeah. Giving the opposition time to get everyone behind the ball. And then it's more difficult. You know, instead of hitting that first time pass, sometimes they take an extra touch. You know, yeah. and someone fills in that little hole there. We've got to play. I always think we play quicker, um, better when we play quicker with a good tempo. I know That's it's not it. always possible, yeah. but I agree with the fishermen there, sideways and slow. And it is a lot of pretty football, mm. but we don't create anything. And I think no. when you look at the goal scored, 22 no. goals we scored in 19 games under Kieran. Yeah, but that's not enough, is it? But after the Gillingham game where we got four, We've scored yeah. 17 goals in 17 games. Now, I mean, look, that we're not, we're not that's really completely... Really yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, look, he's, he alluded to this, didn't he, in the fans' forum, in terms of, you know, you've got, to have, you've got to have certain threats in certain areas in order to get out of this division. So I do wonder, we've all been hanging on to this kind of playoff... I know you and me haven't particularly, but a lot of people in the comments haven't. You know, that, that's great. The optimism is brilliant. But I do wonder if he thought to himself when he came in, if we do get... A, we might sneak a six. Because he obviously thought, knows to himself that we're not scoring a certain amount of goals from corners or free kicks or we don't ever win a, a penalty, do we? How many penalties have we had all season? Two, three, something like that? Um, I, I wonder if this has been a problem that he identified quite quickly and, you know, I, well, I hope it is because I don't see how things will change. I mean, they said on the radio yesterday, well, we finished 11th in the league, 9th, and we look like we're going to finish 9th again. We're still, we, for as positive as everybody's been, 
Last season, we finished ninth on 69 points. Yeah. We're still sitting ninth now. Yeah. And we're still four points off yeah. last season's total. Yeah, now, the yeah, fisherman, yeah. I was talking to him earlier, he says we won't probably get 70. He said 72 points. I think we, me and you said at 72, 73. 72, 73, we said, yeah. Yeah. And look at the two, the two games we've got coming up, Very two, two very tough games. Yeah. You know, Rotherham obviously away and then Wigan. And then you've got yeah. Crew, and then you've got Charlton. So you've got to try somehow, Matt, to keep that positive going. Because well, we're not exactly. getting in the playoffs now, but we don't want it to be a flat end to the season. Well, I've got, well, I've got home last. I've got this. Yeah, got mine. This is our time. The old season ticket brochure. I do, I, you know, I get that a little bit short thrift these days. Look, you and me are a bit along in the teeth now. I've been going since the mid 80s, haven't we? We've seen loads of these have come through. Yeah, they've it's all very well. You know, you've got your hashtag our time, but the talk is cheap, isn't it? Is it? We thought this, this season will be our time. <laughs> the Americans come in. Paul Cook came in with a great track record. We signed 19 players and mostly on championship wages. If the rumours are to be believed, we've got oh, a wage bill that is in the top half of the championship. Interesting, because you, know, you, you didn't watch yesterday's full-time show when Lee Anderson was on with me. And for 25 oh, yeah. minutes, and he was still yeah, going yeah. on at me at quarter to one <laughs> yes, in the morning. <laughs> Lee's, Lee, Lee's trying to tell me and trying to tell everybody, Ipswich Town have got the best squad in League One. Now, I can't get on board with that. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm, it's a difficult if one. If you've got the best yeah. squad, look, we've got some talented players. I'll, I'll say that. Mm. Lee's trying, and then he was texting me saying, name another team that have got a better subs bench than us. Yeah, I do get your point, Lee, but how many times have we had players come off the bench and they've changed the game? Not yeah. very often this season. And no, I agree. We're sitting, I agree. We're sitting ninth in the league. Yeah, and when, when you look at... Fr- yeah. I know, I know a lot of supporters don't particularly pay a lot of attention to other team squads, but you can't be saying Town have got the best squad no. when we're ninth. Is it, is it, and, we've got a nine, and we've got a nine million wage bill, Matt, as well. If not more, apparently. So we've been told. But yeah, I mean, I suppose it's a difference between squad and team, isn't there? We've got a lot of teams that have been maybe together longer than what we have, like your Oxfords and your Rodrums and that. And good, uh, good got comment there from uh, Rob Walker. He's an, he's the older fan. Rob oh, yeah. Walker letting the music play. As an outsider, I think next season you're guaranteed nothing. You can't deny yeah. Yeah. you've an unproven manager. And we have, for yes. as well as Kieran's done, yes. you know, like I said Friday, Matt, next season is time for him to deliver and it's time for Mark Ashton to deliver because you're making all these promises. Yeah, Mark Ashton, yeah. at the minute, town fans are lapping up everything that Mark Ashton says. Well, yeah. I mean, there, well, there's a reason for this. He's he's been on the front foot because we're sitting in ninth. Yeah. <laughs> but next season, when, when when July the thirtieth comes around, it, there's no yeah. time for. Oh yeah. yeah, we dominated the team again. We get we have yeah. to find a way of beating these teams like your Shrewsbury's, your Cambridges, your yeah, 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 yeah. That's and, his, that's one of his big changes. We we said that after the Cheltenham game, wasn't it? How are we going to how are we going to kind of negate that sitting back and just soaking up pressure? Ali okay. says our only weakness is up top, but then creativity. We look, people rave on here about Sonia Luca. When you're playing in one of the roles that he does, Connor Chaplin does. Yeah. yeah. Selena, look, I've defended Selena quite a lot on here, Matt. But when when you look at Selena's stats, yeah. Scott Twine, I know he's one of the outstanding players in and the you've league. Liked him. You've liked him since that Scott long range. Twine, effort, yeah. He's got 25 goal involvements this season for MK. 25. That's goals and assists is what they're saying. Yes. Is that what they're saying, right? And that makes that's a difference. That. Well, that's what we thought we would get with Selena. And we've played top dollar for Selena. So whether or not there's an argument that Selena won't be here next season, I don't know. We'll have to leave that to the, 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 the top brass. Well, that was an interest, it's an interesting one yesterday when you looked at the bench and some of the lone players, obviously Thompson was on the bench, Selena was on the bench, wasn't he? Not going to be yeah. here, Macaulay Bond. Did that say to you, Matt, that they're not going to be here? I don't think Macaulay's going to be here. I mean, we, I think I said a couple of weeks ago before I went away, it was like, I'd like to see Macaulay get a run of games now. It's not really featured much, is he? As, as, as a starter. In order to be able to maybe just underline the fact they had a really good start to the season, and if you could finish the season good, and maybe have seen scored some goals, maybe saw a sneak six, or maybe you know, in and around, there was enough there for McKenna to say, actually, you know, th- this guy, you know, he's had a bit of a dodgy period mid-season. 
He's, he started well, he's finished well. But the fact he's not starting the games with, what, four games to go suggests to me that there's probably going to be other options. And it's a shame because, you know, we've enjoyed singing he's one of our own. It's great seeing the fans represented by a local lad whose dream was to play at Portman Road. He got off to an electric start, didn't he? But for whatever reason, those middle months of the season, from about October through to now, really, one goal. And That's he's not really, one. he's not really had, I don't know if Kieran doesn't fancy him because he's not really played him, has he? No, he hasn't. From the start, he's, he's come on a few times off the bench, but... Pickett's probably had more starts in recent He might have started him yesterday, but he obviously started yeah. James Norwood. And I said, pre-match yesterday, I want to see Norwood score a goal. And he did. He scored a goal. So does it? So does it? Do, do people think that Norwood will stay next season? Then it was a good goal he scored yesterday. I mean, goes to him. It was a good, good cross from Danasian. It was a good run. Um, Probably the kind of goal Bond could have done with really himself. But then he, last position. night, someone's telling me that he's our best striker if fit, he'd scored twenty goals. But I've been hearing this for three years, Matt, about James Norwood. Oh well, if yeah, fit, he'll yeah, score twenty goals. Right? When I think his highest total is twelve. Mm -hmm. He's got six goals this season, and I know yeah. he didn't play the first half of the season, which is fair enough. It but played on if, is it? But he's yeah. been here three years. Yeah, is he going to be Kieran McKenna's number one striker next season, James Norwood? No, I wouldn't. Have I wouldn't. Look, as much as we enjoyed having him on the show and the banter we had with you, he was a great guy, wasn't he? But in a terms of just the business sense of footballing sense, you've got to think there's probably going to be better options. We have the spending power for better options, don't we? But I'm saying, like, for him, he's obviously got that 12-month extension that he could probably... I don't know if it's like, does it have to be taken up by a certain date, by the club yeah. or by him? I, I just think at his age, 32 now, he's going to be wanting to play football. Yeah. He's not going to want to be a bit part player. But he might think, look, he told us, he thinks he can play in the Championship. He did say so yeah. if he's got that belief that he thinks he can be number one, he might think, right, yeah. I'm going to stay here for 12 months and I'm going to yeah. prove that I'm going to be the number one guy. But I think Kieran will be looking somewhere else for his for his, for his strike. He's, he's only going to play one striker. I don't think he's going to play two up front. And I know I was, I was talking to Mike earlier, the fisherman. Yeah, Mike wants him to play two up front. I don't think Kieran's going to do that. I honestly don't. When you look, I was looking at what formation MK played yesterday. They had a three. They had Connor Wickham and then your two wide ones were um, Troy Parrott. Obviously, we had him on loan. And yeah. Twine was the other one. I think Rotherham are probably the only two team who play a, a, a two Seven up front five. with um, Ladapo and yeah. um, Smith. Smith, Smith. Yeah. yeah. And then I looked at Wigan and they had um, Callum Lang was playing up front. Yeah. Um, mm. With, I can't, McGuinness. And then Keen. Keen. Will Keane. Will Keane's playing the 10. He got nearly two. Has he got nearly twenty goals this season? Kevin? Twenty goals. Couldn't he a barn boy? Eh? Could he? And he was it, someone who couldn't stay fit either. But it, it is a conundrum because you think <laughs> we we had Will Keane. He's gone to Wigan. He's got twenty goals. We had, we've got Joe Piggott, who's Scored got twenty goals and he came in. <laughs> two goals. And then I, I I sent you the video of Cole Stockton scoring an absolute yeah. screamer. Now you like Stockton, don't you? You're I fantastic. like him, but I'm a little bit. Because you think at his age, he's 28. Yeah. He's never had a season like this in his career. No, no. Would he be one of them other ones? He's You bring him in and he's just like yeah, yeah. James Norwood who got 30 goals for Tranmere. Yeah. Or he is he well, now on the upward yeah. curve where you think, what would you go for Stockton? I reckon a million tops. You get him from Morecambe. I think you'd probably get him cheaper than that. Would, would he be worth taking a punt on? I'm not saying he's going to be your main man, but I think we'll probably sort sign more than one striker. I think we're going to need <laughs> to like a golfer. He's like a golfer. Kieran needs different clubs in the bag next season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it. You've been watching the Masters, haven't you? Yeah, I've been loving the Masters. Got your chef <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'll tell you what, I sat there on Thursday, Matt, and I was thinking <laughs> I'm going to have a bet. And I thought Scotty Scheffler, yeah, he's world number one. Yeah. yeah. He's well done the one now. And I didn't have a bet. I thought, no, nah, I'm not going to bother. And then he's absolutely... Hey, up, so. But yeah, I just I just think we're going to need different sort of strikers to get out of this league next season. It's not all going to be fancy football. I think we're going to need some League well, One yeah. players who are... Who, I just think... I, it's, it is a hard one. It yeah. is a hard one. Who's he going to go for? We know McKenna likes, he keeps using the word profiles, doesn't he? Different profiles. So, Caden yeah. Jackson is a different profile to Bond in terms of he's quite pacey and he can play down the sides. Yeah, I think you're probably right. I mean, look, because still have Piggott's going to be under contract unless they, they decide he's not for them and 
you know, they tear up the contract and he gets, he gets a payout. Um, so maybe he could be, you know, if they decide that he won't stay next season, he could be a make weight in some kind of deal. But I think Stockton might be a bit too much of a risk for McKenna for the very reasons you just said on the phone to me earlier that, that you know, he's having a bit of a breakout season. But is he, it, there's no way that we can say that he would be able to replicate this form for us. Because we, we've, we've got a player that we bought him from Wimbledon who got 20 plus goals. And he's got does two. He, does, he, does he go for a, a championship? Like, like I've said, I said Vyman. I don't know if he'd drop down, but does he go for someone in a high league? I, I, yes, I would probably say so. I mean, my my kind of reasoning around this earlier uh, uh, earlier in the in the year was that we need someone who's like a Morsey figure. You said that, yeah, up top. So he brings that experience. He's got you know he's he's got that street wiseness. He um, you know he's, he's that fox in the box. Can he shoot from range? Yeah, the vibe would probably just tick those boxes in that, that, in all honesty. He could be an option in that Ashton yeah. will know him and will probably match his wages with Lloyd Vaughan across from the West Country to East Anglia. I don't know. I mean, look, Matt Stanard making a good point there. Will they try Simpson? Sorry, Simpson. We know, you know, they were told in the fans' forum, weren't we, that this club won't be held ransom or whatever it was I by Asia. I don't think he's helped himself. Oh, as Martin just popped into the... He's this bit. He's this bit. He's pressed the wrong button. Um... No, he's he's clearly it's clearly a club versus agent issue, isn't it? And it, and unfortunately, the only victim in this is the fans. They don't get to see Tyrese play, and Tyrese doesn't get to play. So he's had a great season at Swindon, and now he's kind of gone. You know, he's yeah, gone down I'll a sack of it. I, I feel a bit sorry for him because I think he probably. Sh- no one knows what's going on behind the scenes. Um, we he's, he's obviously fans bought, him, were we? You and me always said he probably would never. He was play obviously brought back to sort that contract out, and then yeah, probably yeah, the plan right. was. <laughs> to go back out on loan, you know, for another five months and yeah. score another 10 goals. And he's stuck with a rose then, Matt. But yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I said this yesterday. No, it's actually Friday. When you'll get certain people who are out the team. Yeah. We, we can go to him now, Matt Penny. When certain people are not in the team, they they seem to me to become better players in supporters' eyes. <laughs> yeah, because you don't know Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absence makes the heart grow fonder, Matt Stanard. Well, apparently, from control, we've got two yeah. people waiting to come in. I've got Who's no got? idea who both who these people are. So if you want to press the button, bring him in, Martin. Stephen it's Harry and Woo! I'm, just waiting, I'm just waiting for my fire sticks to arrive. I'm supposed to come hey! <laughs> How you doing? Yeah, be quiet on that, don't one. I'm all right. I, I think it was a disappointment. Did you party, Stephen? Did you go to a party? I did. Yesterday? I did. Yes, it wasn't my birthday. That's August. It was. It was a one-year-old, but we still like put him to bed. Yeah, we had some confusion, Matt, on Friday's show that um people were wishing Stephen Perry happy birthday. And his birthday August, in August. August fourteenth. But there he is. <laughs> all right, Mike. I'm Mike, Mike Seaver. Mike Seaver. All right, Mike. Hey, hey, boys, are right? Hey. All right. Good Hello, to see Steve. you, Steve. Hey, boy. Let's start. Let's start with. Yeah, I was just saying, I'm watching that game, and one thing I want to say, I don't think that's sending off. It's although stupid, I don't yeah. think that caused the result. Agreed. Because no, that, yeah, that agree. goal was perhaps it even it even caught it even caught caught Walton Walton Cole. Nobody yeah. expected him to hit that, you know. <laughs> so I'd, even though it was stupid, and that you know that was definitely a defender with a nosebleed going for a challenge that he yeah. thought he was going to get, and everybody could see back out. You're not getting it, and he he just <laughs> yeah. had a rush of blood, you know. Which I get, I see the passion he wants to try and get the ball and score. I get that, but he was stupid. But yeah. it didn't cause the goal. You know, at the end of the day, that was one that was like that was like an Oxford goal. It was the perfect goal. You know, yeah. he tries that ten times, he gets it once. You know what I mean? The Oxford corner. That was the perfect corner, the perfect ball in, the perfect header. It was just that mm. perfect sweet spot. And yeah. you can't legislate for that. I don't yeah, I do think it, Steve, I do think it's sending it's, off to give him momentum. It's, if Matt was right though. It's something that we don't do. We never ever score a goal yeah. like that because the ball yeah. drops and he just has a go. We don't. We take a touch and we try and pass when we might. This is where I had my issue when the starting lineup came up. Yeah. Now everyone keeps saying we play a Luca. I I like a Luca. I would love a Luca to stay. For me, I think he's better as a bench option to come on to control the game once the game's won. Once 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 we're one or two up, bring him on because I think he always plays deeper. You're not the pre-assist guy, pre-assist guy, if you're number 10. Just, just, you're just, just a minute, Stephen. Um, Emerson said the standing off did change the game. Yeah, get two subs. Game yeah. plan. He was obviously going to make two subs. 
Uh, he had Selena and he had Bon on the touchline ready to come yeah. on, and then they sat back down, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I mean, as it didn't change the game, isn't that goal came because of the sending off? Yeah, I, get, I agree, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Agree. if your defenders are at 30 yard line, you want to know why your defenders are at 30 yard yeah. line, you know. That, that was just like one of those, like, he had nothing else on, so he thought, bugger it, I lit it, and it came off, you know, mm. on another day it doesn't, you know. But I was just saying, like, you know, if you're the pre-assist guy, the pre-assist guy, yeah, you're obviously playing deeper. You're not a number 10. Yeah. And that's where I see Aliko yeah. playing. He's, like, just in front of the front two, you know. Yes. He's look. He's like the quarterback, like Morsi, is looking for the ball to play, play out to. And that's not a number 10. Your number 10 is the guy there to have a pot shot to play in a striker. That's why his numbers aren't very high, I don't think. Mm. It's because he plays a lot deeper than a Salino or a Conor Chaplin. You know, I'm not saying it's they've really had big. the numbers. I'm not saying they've had the numbers for what a number 10 should have. But mm. if you look at the numbers compared to a Luko, it's stark. You know, <laughs> yeah. when you see a Luko on the field, you know you're not getting a goal because he just doesn't play in that position. He might yeah. play the wonderful pre-assist to Penny, yeah? But if Penny buggers up, that's useless. Yeah, you know, if Penny right. plays the passing and Bond misses, that pre assist is useless. We need him for if he's going to be number 10, he's got to be further up the field and affect play. And yeah. I think he can do it, I just don't think he wants to do it. I don't know, or I don't think that's what he's been told to do. If that's the case, then he's better as a substitute to come on once those number 10s have got us the goals. Yeah, I think um, we're missing a trick there. I think we're trying to play a defensive player too early because he keeps hold of the ball now. That's just my assessment. I'd, rather, I'd like I like a Luca. I'd like him to say, but I can see him at thirty three being a bench option coming on just a quarterback with Marcy when the game's already yeah. won. You know, just to Mike, see the game out. What do you think, Mike? A Luca? Um, look, I, I I just think that he's a he's a player that that looks good but offers nothing. Um, I agree with Steve. I think maybe a bench player coming off when we're winning two or three nil, but. Yes, oh, yesterday, people. Uh, there's so many excuses for why we didn't win that game. The reality is, we have we have Morsi who was like, okay, he's our captain. He's our. I don't think he had a brilliant, particularly brilliant game yesterday. Oh, he was a average player yesterday, like a lot of that midfield. Um, done well, um, but he's got no one with him that can create. We've got no creative midfielder. And I don't know how long, how many, how many seasons now. When was the last decent creative Jilton probably? <laughs> yeah, I was about to say you that. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. you know, you had Holland and Magilton, which, you know, Magilton used to create, Holland used to break up play and bomb forward, which is what I want Morsey to do. I want Morsey to break up play. I want Morsey to get forward. What? There was what we had crosses in the box, and the, how many times I think there was one or maybe two players in the box, max, Yeah. yesterday. We put more crosses in the first 10 minutes than I think we did the whole season yesterday. <laughs> yeah, because Champion, Champion could have scored after two minutes. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I mean, sorry. Go on, Mike. I just yeah, said, no, I didn't say that. Sorry, Mike. Yeah, no, and uh, so, like I said, uh, for Luco, for me, look, we need, me and Richard talked about this, so we're having a conversation over WhatsApp. And I think realistically, I think we need some, ex re a really good, experienced League One midfielder. Uh, maybe that one that's been promoted to championship, dropped down again, promoted type player. Someone with a bit of experience in this league, really, because quite frankly, I look, I would get rid of all the all the four players. Um, Norwood is too injury prone. Never he scores goals, no getting past that. He's too injury prone. Um, like Martin says, best ability is his availability, and he's not always available. Yeah. Jackson has been here so long; he's part of the relegation squad, and. Mm. Well, I just think he's a headless chicken. He's played. He played a couple of good games under Nick McKenna. Not going to deny that. But we need better than him if we're going to get out of this league. Piggott, I don't know. I don't think he fits McKenna's style. Um, uh, do you know? I'm Bond for me. He's had his time. Look, he, he's played for his Dream Boy Club, and it's and he's he, you know he's dried up. So look, you know, yeah. get rid of the front four. I'd get rid of, oh, look, I'm going to say this. I'm going to. I'd get rid of Lasseline. I'd get rid of Luca. I think we need a bit more grit and a bit more. So people, you know, Selena has what probably out of ten games, probably three good games. That's not what you need in this league. To get out of this league, you need you need your whole team to play well. And this bullshit that um, that this is the best team in League One. Oh my days! That's a, that has got to be the sweeping. That's 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 worse than my Marlon Harewood moment. That really is. <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. 
I we think the best team in this league, we'd be in the playoffs, or at least in the playoffs. Yes. I think, I think we'd be top two. Yeah. I think yeah. anyway, we're we still... are ninth in League One, and we we might we had the best wage packet in this built this league. I'll give them that. Yeah. You know, if that's what Lee means, that's the best, best wage packet. Yes, but that's Second about best. it. Second best. West West uh, Sheffield Wednesday's had of us. Sheffield 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 Wednesday's had of us. Was that a wage bill? Yeah. Really? Bannon's on nearly thirty five. Mm. You know that's why they can only bring in loans. They just can't afford to buy it because they have Bannon and people like that. You know. Yeah. Fair, fair, that fair point. But the point is, yeah, is I think you're being slightly harsh. Yeah, I think Selena had a really bad start. I don't think he fit McKenna, uh, Paul Cook's system as well as what people thought he would. And he also had COVID. You know, his numbers are getting better second half of the season. Yeah. Uh, you know, you start saying by saying, well, we haven't got any creativity. Well, he's got it in spades. We just he need to get. Know. He yeah, but he know. has. Even if you just look. Ja, 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 no, 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 I don't like. I don't, more than I don't Let people have a cup come back with a counter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go on. yeah. You turn around and say that we need to win games, and you say that's like three good games out of ten. Nobody has ten good games out of ten. You're lucky if you get most players at this level having five good games out of ten. Well, Danasi's you know, done it all season. <laughs> yeah, but he's not. He's not forward, is he? He's not looking doesn't to try matter. to score goals, is he? No, it's matter. easier to defend than is to try and open up defenses. It's yeah, easy. You said no player has ten good games a season. So that's you, been our most. You, in fact, so you, is Burns. To be honest, you're talking about creative play. I'm not talking about everyone. You're talking about you were talking about those you want to get rid of, Selena and people like that. I'm saying Selena has opened up defenses. Selena does open up defenses. Yeah, you may like him, you may love him. It's irrelevant. Yeah, the point is some of the passes he's created. Some of the forward pick thought, you know, he, he can see the ball and where the ball's going to go before any of those players on that field. That is a fact. Because you see him looking around and you want, he, before that ball comes to him, he knows where it's going. If the other guy doesn't run the direction he expects it to go, that's not that's not on him. That's on the player not making the run. Yeah. You can say our other players are a bit too slow for him. That's a good argument. But the top and bottom of it is it's there. You know, you've just got to get a team together. That's a real good comment there, him. Stephen. That's a real good comment there from Rob Walker saying, Ten yeah. games in next season, and you're still ninth. <laughs> Will you hold your nerve? Well, I tell yeah, you, I see a lot of supporters. Rob won't hold their nerve. To be fair, yeah, I probably would because ten games into this season, we were like twentieth. You can't. We, we can't be ninth after ten games, Stephen. We need to. I'm be not in saying that we will three. be. I we tell need you to what, be in that top three all I think season. We, I we can't think, keep yeah. making, Stephen. We can't keep making excuses. This season I'm, has been an abject failure. It has, but no, no. there's mitigating factors. You know, everyone can say there's mit there's never been a team rebuild as big as this one at any club and been successful. Yeah, True. we've yeah. got to put that into the mix. You know, everybody who started the season, if if you turn around to any club and say we'll give you 19 new players, do you think you'll win the league? They'll say yes. Yeah, it very rarely happens. In fact, it, I've never heard it happen before. You know, we're going to take time. We're going to sign a lot of players. They haven't the signed 19. Half of that squad was there last season. You know, half a Bolton yeah. squad were there last season. Most of Rotherham's were there last season. You know, we're not, you know, same as Plymouth, same as Oxford. Most of their teams were there last season. They're just building on what they had last season. Yeah. I we kind just of agree. Actually, threw actually, everything in the bin and started again. I actually agree with you there, actually. There is, the, we, what we do have this season, what we didn't have last season, is we do have a foundation to build on. Yeah. We have a foundation of, of players that we know that can do the job. But we also know, and we have to accept as town fans, right, there's players there that are not good enough to do the job. Exactly. Your Jacksons, your Norwoods, because of injuries. Your Piggott is not a McKenna-type player, unless you, I guess, like like you said to me earlier, Will Keane banging in 20-plus goals from a number 10 role. You know, uh, uh, unless you play Piggott in that role. But, you know, your Bond, they're not going to... These players, your Chaplin, even Chaplin, I find really frustrating. He's all tricks, flicks and... Hustle and buff another headless chicken game yesterday. You know, we got we we need we I think we have a great foundation to build on for next season. And I've already had like, oh, you want McKenna gone, rubbish. That's, no, I don't want McKenna gone. Why would I want him gone? He's he's a breath of fresh air as a manager. I like his the way he the way he's calm about things. And I do believe I'll be you know that in the summer he will pick the best of the squad that we've got and who he feels bits in our jigsaw puzzle and bring in the, the pieces that we need to help us get promoted next year. It's got to be top two. We can't be doing the playoffs. To be we fair, you've got a point a shit side in the playoffs. You know, we start off with a goalkeeper. <laughs> 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 
He can't keep away, can he? Where is he? He's he's at Africa oh, alive. They can't no, hear you, Martin. Me. Come on, here. Go on out. Go on I out. Think, do you want to bring Kelly in? I think bring we got Noah back. <laughs> <laughs> All I was going to say is, you know, at the end of the day, Mike's got a point. We start off, we've got a good goal. We've got a good defence. We've got a good left wing back. You know, mm. maybe an extra midfield. Oh, you know, where's Kelly? Is. Kelley's in the house. There he right. How are we doing? So really, it's just the forwards we're going to look at, you know. And I think they're being looked at. I think the reason why we have so many changes, and that's a bugbear of mine, we seem to be changing every week, is because he doesn't, in, especially in the forward areas, he doesn't trust them. And he's just playing oh, to great, keep them actually. happy. I think he's playing to keep them happy so that they don't down tools and say we don't get a look in. You know, the fact that Piggott hardly ever even gets to get on the grass, I think you can say he's he's done. You know, that's we're not going to see him again and barring a disaster. You know, I think I think he's just rotating them all round. And that could Mm. even be going to Selena and Aluko. He's rotating them all around just to keep them all happy until we get to the end of the season and then he's going to decide who he wants. Because right now I don't think he's keen on any of them. No, I agree. That's why he's right. changing the round so right, much. Right, let's have some positivity. Callie, talk to me about Luke Wolfen and yesterday. Oh, he was solid, wasn't he? And you know what? Wes Burns did just if he did just squared that ball to or crossed it to Luke. You see, when he started off that run and then he played it out wide. If he'd got it back, he smashes that in. But <laughs> it's all shoulda, woulda, coulda. It's the po- that's positive. It's positive play. Like how many times under you know, like I was a Cook fan. And he, under Cook and even under Lambert, how many times did we ever see our centre backs getting yeah. in the other half, let alone breaking up play and running? I actually thought the game was okay yesterday. Um, I thought uh, so. If we look at if we look at it, when I'm looking at the game as we, as we seen the starting and the way we're playing, we started really positive. You know, first ten minutes we were on fire. Yeah. Um, as as like Mike and Steve said, you know, the amount of crosses we got in the first couple of minutes were, you know, it's like fucking hell. Um, but we then we then kind of settled after we got the goal, and we kind of, I think, because it was a bit of a dead rubber game, we didn't really get out of gear free of, free for me. Do you know what I mean? It was just a yeah. bit like, right, okay, let's right. keep the ball. Did you um, think Cali when the linesman done his hamstring? That sort of it killed it a little bit, didn't it? It did. It went flat, and then yeah. I think for, that, that's what I mean. That's where the gear kind of changed. It was just like, okay, cool, let's keep the ball because Shrews we weren't doing nothing. They were trying and, you know, they they got away their play or whatever. They're trying to kind of play like long ball or whatever. And they are chasing down the ball. But then, you know, our defence is, is covering it. I thought Cam was doing OK until he got to the, you know, the, the red card was a red card. It was simple as. I thought it was a straight ride right at the beginning, but it wasn't. It was a second yellow. It was definitely yeah. a second yellow. We can talk about whether he... We can talk about whether no, Matt Starr was saying there, Kelly, was the lineswoman the fourth official? I think she was the fourth official, wasn't she, yesterday? And they were yeah, she was the fourth official. And then, if I'd have been there yesterday, down. if I'd have been there yesterday, I could have been on the line. There. I could have had my moment. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm trying per- down there. So the, the <laughs> person from the stand, the person from the stand, the fan, he, they would, it was a guy who ended up just being like the fourth official. So he was well, holding he's the trainers. He's trainers. He needs to get him some yeah. Yeezys. He needs a Yeezy <laughs> slides, mate. He needs a Yeezy slides, mate. Um, but no, it was definitely a red card because if you look at it, he's lost control and he's not in control of himself. So even if even if you say the studs aren't showing, if you say there's no contact, he's still lost control. Mm. It's still a yellow card. The first yellow is a the first yellow, Matt. It's soft. A, it's soft. It's a yellow, but it is a very soft yellow, isn't it? Personally, I thought the referee like he lost yeah. control to me because there was too many yellow cards in that game, and we know League One's a physical yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Four, yeah. yeah. Four, yeah. Kelly. Thing is, I think you crunch. I said the referee looked like he was he was looking for a red card. Maybe the way, the way he just banded yeah. them yellow cards, it was like, all right, he just sweets this week, he just sweets this week. Oh, yeah, I have more sweets, have more sweets. At some point, someone was going to get sent off. I think, I think someone, I think one of the commentators, Shrovey's a commentator, said, at this rate, this is going to end up with one player sent off, you know, because yeah. it's just getting a little bit yeah. too. Little bit too silly, and so you know, the trouble is that's, that's what you get with these League One referees you don't get consistency, you don't get often very good officials. And quite frankly, you know, uh, you know, it, it I don't know, I, I agree that I did change the game a little bit. We went a bit sort of completely dull after the after the um lino injury, but mm. there's no excuses. We should we should have put you know, people I've seen people blaming the line, I've seen people blaming Ooh. the the red card. I'm like, hang on a minute, we should have put them to bed well before then. But that's, and... that's what I've been trying to say. So that's where our issue is. Our mm. issue, as we know, is up top. So I agree, I kind of agree what Leando said the other day. 
And he's not saying the best team. Let's pick up what he said. He said the best squad, <clears throat> right? But I think what he should have said, and I think maybe emotions were running high after the game and he was defending the corner, it was we have one of the best squads. And the reason I say that, and we just pick up on Lee's point, is because he, if you look at the season, the season tells a picture, right, between August to end of April. That's going to tell the picture that's the season, right? But actually, we've got two stories in that season. We've got a Lamb, uh, sorry, a Cook error and the McKenna error. If you look yeah. at the McKenna error, we are up there, especially on form table. I think we're probably not, we were at one point top two, probably like three or four. So, you know, I think there is, we are one of the best squads. We just have to find the missing thing, which is the attack. Yeah. And we're not scoring. You look at, you know, we talked about Aluko and you talked about the midfield. Backinson played some lovely passes through, mm. but there's I no agree. movement from that striker. And, and I agree, like, okay, Norwood scored. Good goal. You know, we scored a header. Great goal. Great assist from JD as well. But He should have, though. But the thing is, there was no, what else? There was no hope. Like, as a lone striker up there, hold it up, bring players in. He wasn't bringing as many players in. Um, he, he kind of felt it was more there to kind of go there to clip people's heels. So... We do, do you think that was why Piggott was brought in? Do you think that's why Piggott was brought in originally to for someone to hold the ball up and to, to lay it off to you reckon... to your left or right strikers? Because you know, Piggott has rubber feet, yeah. let's be honest. I reckon so, but do you know what? Yeah. I'll, in Piggott's defense, what I'll say is I think some of the best football he's played, um, obviously he had a bit he's he scored a couple of goals early in the season, I know, but the best football he's played, I think, has been under McKenna with Caden Jackson. I think he works well in that kind of system. So if you're talking about McKenna's having multiple formations and tactics and all the rest of it, maybe you know you preferred like three five two, uh, uh, three five two or whatever formation. You could go there, maybe have a a type of a pig and a, a Kaden Jackson because I thought they do pretty well. And I think do you know what I mean? Like they've not had too many training. They're training like ad hocly a couple of days here and there. Get a couple of weeks in them in pre season. They'll get things drilled into them. Do you know what I mean? So we've got to have a bit more faith. We have got a good squad. But I just think we, the missing thing is the, the, the strikers. And we can all talk about, well, we need this striker who scores 20 goals or 30 goal striker. But Piggott scored 20 goals last season. And it, it, sometimes it's just not a fit. Look at Wes Burns as an example. Wes Burns wasn't lighting up the league um, the, the, before or whatever. And I think this is his best uh, best season of his career as at Ipswich. Which is, why I think, which is why I think come the end of the season, unlike last season, we were relying on who Mark Ashton knows and who Paul Cook knows. No, we'll have the recruitment system set up. It'll be more targeted up, targeted to what we need. Yeah, you know, he'll be going, I want this, this, and this. And the recruitment team will go through a list of players and go, well, these are the people under that subset. This is what you're asking yeah. for. Have a pick. The yeah. 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 I just don't want to risk what we've, what we've had to tolerate in the last three or four seasons, you know. Yeah. I don't want, look, I, I, look I, you know, Jackson's played well a couple of times under McKenna, but he's done nothing. Nothing since he's been here as a player, you know. For me, yeah, but you know, again, it's just fit for player. Warren another season with us. We and need McKenna's not looking. Jackson if Mike, we're going to get us out, McKenna's not looking at that. He's looking at what Caden Jackson's done for him since he's been here. And he has done well, isn't it? See, well, and, and, and you can say every and, manager I'm sorry, he's Mike, played under since he's been at Ipswich. That's not fair. He's, he's, he's not been prolific in any time at all. Okay, Mike. Okay, Mike. Here's a, here's a thing to you, right? He's a player, right? He's picked up by a manager. Lambert, for whatever reason, did not like Jackson. He didn't like him, right? And it got a bit toxic towards the end of their tenure, right? So you're playing for a manager that you know is not going to give you an opportunity. Did you ever hear anything from Caden Jackson's mouth? He got his head down and threw that. Hold on, hold on. Let me, fin let me land. Let me finish my point, please. Let me finish my point, right? Then you can come back, right? He's come back, right? He's worked under McKenna. Unfortunately, he's been injured. If he hadn't been injured... Everyone be jumping on Caden Jackson, right? Saying he's the fucking greatest player and everything because he'd be scoring. He was in form. He's a good player under McKenna. He deserves a chance under McKenna, right? At the very least, he deserves a chance just for the way he got on with it. Shit. Quickly, the way, Mike, he, was Mike, Mike, the way quickly, he was treated by, by Paul Lambert. Left. Right. Let Mike have his say and then we'll move you free on. Yeah. We've got a five minute warning from the governor. Five minute warning. Yeah, I, 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 look, you know, two or three good games under McKenna doesn't make him a prolific striker. And for me, him and along with the rest of the strikers are just not not good enough for this to get us out of this league. We need. I'll just say that. one thing. Yeah, right it's now, simple as. Right now, under McKenna, JD is our number one striker because he's done more since McKenna's been here than any others. Caden Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he hasn't he's done more, more since McKenna's been McKenna. here than any other striker. Since up to he's his injury, more, he's scored more goals. Norwood scored more. I'm not goals. looking at more games. Goals. 
Okay, do goals to minutes. Do goals to minutes. 27 goals between all of us. Give me goals to minutes. Give me goals to minutes. You're looking at all of us. You've all had your say. You just don't like Jackson. Jackson's got the right attitude. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you very much. See you later, lads. See you later, mate. We could get a word in. The hard truth can get a word in. He's only got 20% battery left. So I've got another stat for you. Go on. I was looking at what another reason why we are ninth in the league. Yeah. So I was looking at the form home and the form away. So we've got the ninth best home record, 21 games, 38 points. We've got the eighth best away record, 21 <laughs> games, 27 points. So yeah, there's yeah, another yeah. reason why we're still ninth. Yeah, it's so frustrating, isn't it? And like, and while I was away, of course, there was the game changer anniversary, wasn't it? What you did a show around that, didn't you? And what, yeah, was, yeah, everyone, what was everyone's? I mean, you can you can't not be positive about their involvement in the club after Evans, but you still can't get away from the fact that you know we really should have been in the top six this season. It's minimum. It's on the pitch, isn't it? Off the pitch, like I think we, we've said loads of times, Matt. Everything's really going in the positive direction, but yeah, you are judged on what you do at three o'clock on a Saturday and quarter yeah. to eight on a Tuesday night. And <laughs> yeah. over the season, it hasn't been good enough. We've had some good, look, we've had some really good moments. I think this season I've enjoyed the season. Yeah. Enjoyed going to the games, obviously got back because of COVID yep. crowds are up at Portman road, you know, season tickets. I think we're going to sell a lot of season tickets, yep. but ultimately still ninth. Yeah. It's, it is going to be a missed opportunity. I, I do get what all the guys were saying there and that, you know, we brought in 19 players and it was difficult. As soon as everyone started talking about this gelling process at the top of the season, mm. it started getting a bit of a thing. But I mean, look, look, you have to give a shout out to Wigan, don't you? They were, you know, unfairly in my eyes, relegated out of the championship because of the, the new ownership. And then, 86 points, Wigan, from 40 there games. There you go. That's a great turnaround. They could have gone down last season, couldn't they? So they're, they're probably going to still got six games to go. No. Yeah, still got six games. Yeah, yeah. They could get 100 points Yeah, quite easily. They, yeah, they points. do. I hope they do get back to the championship. And you'll remember Barry, our friend Barry from the Wigan yeah. show, at the top of the season, said, oh, look out for us. We could be a dark horse. I think he played us there. I bet he thought they were going to win the title all along. And then if you look, MK second, they're three points clear of Rotherham. Yeah. So Rotherham has stalled. And that's that's Town's next game, isn't it? Next um, yeah, yeah. Saturday at 12.30 the New York. Who would have thought Charlton would beat Rotherham yesterday? So you don't know. You, you don't know in this division, do you? That's the problem we've got. We don't know from one week to the next week which is going to be like. So we need to get that consistency. And it seems that everyone who's been on the show today and in the comments thinks that, that that's going to be a new strike for us. But yeah, but you've got you've got three teams, Matt. If you look Wednesday, Sunderland, Wickham, they're all on for seventy three points, and yeah, yeah. Sunderland and Wednesday got a game in hand. So three out. Three out, two out of three there going for that last but It's going to be an 80 point to get sixth place. And it, look, it's it's not Martin did say on Friday, you know, that this league is probably it's it's never been this strong when you think of it. Absolutely, going down to sixth place. I mean, Christ, <laughs> absolutely, because there's no real teams. You look at you look out that top seven, yeah, of lost form. Oxford yeah. are the team now who've hit the buffers at the wrong stage of the season. And they're probably going to miss out on the playoffs. They're going to be yeah. probably eighth because we're only what? We're only four points behind Oxford. But what's your yeah, thoughts towards right. Rotherham next Saturday with with Burgess obviously now being suspended? Yeah, of course, yeah. One what game. are you doing there? Are you going to go to a back four? Are you going to keep a three? Are you going to bring Thompson in? Or, in my eyes... It's got to be time for Elkham Bagger. Yeah, to okay. step in. I was going to say that to you on the phone. Yeah, yeah, he can do. yeah, Bagger. Yeah, give him a go. Why not? And just throw him in the mix at Rotherham. Look, they ain't going to go up to so give him an opportunity. He plays, into, albeit for Indonesia, he plays internationally, doesn't he? And he looked good in that little cameo he had in the in the uh, Pizza Cup last season. Give him a go. Yeah, why not? Um, He's a big lad. He's a big lad. Been on the bench, hasn't he? Been on the bench. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah give him a go. Right. Should we, should we call it a day now? Martin needs to go back. He's got he's gonna go and feed elephants or something. I think we've done an hour. Yeah. Um I think we've we've chatted about ninth place enough 